Hi, how can I help you today? Okay, but to get you to the right place, I need you to tell me more about what you'd like to do today. You can say things like, I want to know if my prescription is ready. So, how can I help you? Product. I'll just need a little... Okay, one last thing. Would you like to speak with the pharmacy or the store? St st Just say store. pharmacy or store. That was John Hendrickson. John has a curious relationship with language. As a journalist and author, he writes words for a living. But he also has a stutter and struggles to say them out loud. While most people who stutter as children grow out of it, John is part of the 20% who continue stuttering into adulthood. And there's no real cure. For John, no amount of therapy, exercises, or hypnosis has done the trick. So we're going to run an experiment. Imagine a special machine called the listenometer that works like this. John talks into this end, and his words go into this box, which removes the stuttering from his speech. There are actually three different types of stutters. They're called repetitions, prolongations, and blocks. That's why the listenometer has these three levers. Push the lever down, and the machine will begin removing that type of stutter. Just listen to what it sounds like when we push all of them down. It's perpetually frustrating to know exactly what you want to say and not be able to say it. I ask myself, is anyone ever going to give me a job? Am I ever going to be able to find a partner, get married, recite my vows? Everyone expects you to have beat it by now, because adults know how to talk. The listenometer makes John's speech as smooth and buttery as his written words. It injects fluency, which society demands. Turn on the radio and we expect a soundbite. Pick up the telephone and we expect an immediate response when we say hello. For the longest time, stuttering has been described as an issue with speech. But what if instead we turn the focus on you, the listener? As John talks, I'll be adjusting the listenometer, leaving in more and more of these stuttering speech patterns. Your job is to keep listening as the stuttering intensifies. Ready? First, I'm going to leave in John's repetitions. That verse moment in which a person begins to, 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 to stutter and takes everyone around them by surprise, it's a painful moment. When we leave in John's repetitions, you hear him stutter briefly at the beginning of certain words. But with prolongations, the middle parts of words get elongated, like this. Prolongation. Now, every person stutters differently, and John rarely prolongs his words. But no matter how a person stutters, the reactions are often depressingly similar. Take your time, relax, take a deep breath, you'll get it out. And that's just a wild misunderstanding of the whole thing. We now know that anxiety isn't the cause of stuttering. It's a neurological condition with a complex genetic component. But anxiety can still trigger a stutter. So showing your own impatience, guessing the end of a sentence, or interrupting and telling John to relax can actually cause a stutter to intensify. Keep that in mind as I pull up the listenometer's final lever, leaving in the third type of stutter, blocks. That's when the beginnings of words get stuck. Remember, your job is to fill in these gaps with patience. Right after a really long, painful block is momentary relief and lots of exhaustion. And you typically have a large exhale, or you may even have to 
catch your breath. And then you look up the listener and in a lot of a lot of cases of that person may look like they just watched a car accident. In order to avoid blocking, people like John have developed numerous workarounds. So pose a question to me and I'll answer it with all word subs. Can you describe what you had for breakfast? I had a thing, I got the pastry from the shop. It was it was a it wasn't a cookie, it was a it was a a, a thing with it was excellent, buttery, you know, it was it was it was excellent. The thing you know what I'm talking about. For breakfast, John had a raspberry croissant. I didn't really answer your question there. I was constantly avoiding the raspberry, trouble on the R, raspberry. I was avoiding croissant because of that sound, if you think about it, cro- you can f- feel it in your neck. It's real tense and tight, cross, croissant. And I knew I would block on it. I think of that sometimes as like, you're just trying to make it to the other side of the log and you hope you don't fall. About five years ago, John gave up on techniques like circumlocution, deciding instead that he would stutter through the words that he actually wanted to say. He began writing about stuttering, most notably in a piece for The Atlantic titled What Joe Biden Can't Bring Himself to Say. Even coming on your show this morning, this is my nightmare in a lot of ways. But, you know, the way to um, overcome that is to talk about it. And it doesn't have to be a weakness. It can just be a part of you, this thing that just exists. During these moments, John's putting a tremendous trust in his audience. And that trust brings us to the true magic of the listenometer. It's a fake machine, but in a way, it does exist. It's actually you. Your patience. Your eye contact. Your willingness to listen. Throughout this video, our imagined listenometer saved you a mere 65 seconds. It's not that long to hear what someone has to say. After all, John and those who stutter have been waiting much longer for us to listen.